Hey guys, Desolator Magic here with a fun, fun story that occurred uh, just four days ago. Totally epic mega pimp baller Shahar Shenhar, who is now in the uh, Magic Pro League, I believe. He was streaming Arena on Twitch, I guess as he's probably at this point legally obligated to. And he won up against the infamous Witch King. Oh, I'm familiar with that username. Witch King likes to time stall. He likes to spam the chat annoyingly and just be a dick. He really likes to play thin wind condition Nexus to fairy garbage. And against Shahar, he was playing the same thing. Now, Shahar, by the way, was also playing complete and utter Teferi aids. But at least he had the Eldest Reborn in his deck. At least he had some semblance of a card that could maybe win the game. So Witch King ended up basically running out of anything he could win with. Like, he had a couple win cons, like maybe a mill thing or like a, I don't know, Dawn of Hope. I'm not sure. But Shahar removed them all. So... At a certain point, he was left with just Nexus of Fate in his uh, library. And that's it. Four of them. Well, anytime they would go to the graveyard, they go right back to the library because that card is broken garbage. Whoever approved it should be not just fired from Wizards, but also fired out of a cannon out of Seattle. In fact, Wizards of the Coast should just outright sue that person for damage to their company over lost customers over that one card. Like, it's that bad right now. Whatever, they've already hinted that they're about to ban it, so it's fine with me. Well, especially after this wonderful spectacle, um, word was getting around on social media that Shahar was refusing to give up, and so was this absolute douche Witch King. So for around two hours, no joke, Shahar just kept hitting, you know, go, 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 after he kept casting Nexus and taking infinite turns. Now, Shahar didn't lose because he never took a turn. I mean, he was in the Diamond League, same as me, I wouldn't concede. Especially just on principle. I mean, the last time I had somebody go uh, an infinite on Nexus, I timed them out to a 90% timer every single turn for 37 minutes, and they eventually just conceded. I am not going to lose to that toxic degenerate trash. If Wizards won't do something about it, I'll do something about it. And every single time I just run out of gas against a Teferi deck, I will time them out full four timeouts every single time. I fully encourage you guys to do the same. If you have a problem with me doing that, shut up, I don't care. Something needs to be done to stop people from playing that deck, and I'm going to do it. So I believe it was actually about one hour and 47 minutes later, his opponent, Witch King, finally concedes. Finally. But wait, ahead of time, some of the, you know, higher upset wizards are like, oh, well, our person that we, like, are paying to stream, and he's a huge pro, is streaming. What's going on? Because people were, like, tweeting links to it. Like, look what this piece of human garbage is doing. Look how broken and unplayable Arena is. Look how terrible this card is. And soon, you know... A thousand, ten thousand, maybe a hundred thousand people on social media are getting the word of, hey, don't play Arena, it's degenerate crap, because stuff like this will go on, and a bunch of the players are complete dicks. Well, that wonderful PR got the attention of Chris Clay, who popped into the live stream, and, um, and, well, since this is Chris Clay we're talking about, he just went into the back end and banned Witch King. So he actually said in the chat, um, interesting, like after the guy conceded, he says, I'm not 100% sure if it was the ban or if they actually just conceded. And people were asking, oh, you banned him? And he says, yeah, no, we banned him. And somebody in the chat asked him, so do you guys ban everyone that does this or is this a special case? And then they reiterated, I mean, you guys have to have the ability for DA to see um, players that are doing this. I, I assume they mean developer access or I'd call it administrative access to the logs, but honestly, a human, especially a developer, wouldn't be the one doing it. They should have an AI system that simply catches enough people playing Nexus or games that go on for unusually long and investigate it. Unfortunately, it's not clear if they can terminate a game by banning someone. As far as I know with what the system works, they can't. I think he legitimately conceded. The number one most prevalent theory on the internet is that Witch King simply really had to use the bathroom. That's an amateur mistake, Witch King. If you want to take Arena seriously, you gotta play it on a laptop so you can take it with you. So anyway, Chris responded, This is a great kickstart to official policy around it, but it's pretty clear this was against the terms of service. I don't know what that means. This is a great kickstart to official policy around doing this. Are you foreshadowing a future change? Are you finally going to ban the damn card? The funny thing is, I've said it before. Any other analyst who knows what they're doing has said this before. We have two more sets coming out. In fact, at the time we were saying it, three more sets coming out. 
All you're doing is adding fuel to the fire of Teferi decks. You're going to get more control spells, better, faster, you know, counter spells, removal, uh, blue pin down, um, draw. In RNA, it picked up a bunch of green fog and absorb. I mean, it's the deck is only going to get worse, and they know this. They have to ban the deck at some point point. I don't care how well it did or didn't do at the SCG Open. That's not representative of anything. On Arena and MTGO, people are playing it and people are leaving because of it. People are not going to FNM because of it. It's that simple. Not a lot of people play Nexus Loop in paper because of the sheer time it takes to shuffle, which on digital it takes less than a second to shuffle. But that doesn't mean that the card and the deck aren't problematic. They absolutely are and they need to go. They need to ban bare minimum uh, Teferi, and obviously Nexus, that's a given. I mean, it, duh. And then maybe possibly search for Ascanta as well, because that card is just too damn good. And plus, we all know that Teferi can untap Ascanta and give somebody access to basically, I'd say on average in the typical deck, the top 9 to 11 cards of their deck per turn. So even without Nexus, they'll go get a counter spell. They'll go get um, some kind of remover, Ixalan's Binding. They can deal with anything on any turn at any given time, which is completely unacceptable. That's just too high of a level of like deck manipulation and filtering. It, it just is. That's a fact. So after this PR nightmare for Arena that people who haven't even heard of Arena tuned into this stream, they're like, oh, something really interesting and noteworthy is happening on Twitch, and this is their first impression of Arena? Yeah, this is everybody's impression of Arena if you're playing above even Gold League, okay? This deck is everywhere, and it needs to die immediately. After this complete and utter embarrassment for Wizards of the Coast, very publicly by a very public figure, ooh... They almost have to do an out-of-cycle ban, bare minimum on Arena. I love the people in my uh, comment section who are saying, oh, they'll, they're not going to ban something from Standard. There is a card banned right now from Standard, you idiot. It's the Red Raptor. And before that, in the last two years, they've banned nine cards. Nine cards! Standard hasn't been healthy or playable for two years, and they wonder why they're losing customers left and right. They need to get more aggressive with this, which, I mean, okay, banning nine guards is pretty damn aggressive, but, you know, maybe move to prevention. Maybe don't print degenerate crap like this ahead of time. At least we don't have a Scarab God. I mean, Carnage Tyrant isn't even on the same planet as Scarab God. Galta is still pretty degenerate, but people are playing so much control, whatever. I could name a couple more cards that I want gone, but if they at least got rid of just this deck and took one card away from Red Rush, people could actually play the game. Wouldn't that be nice? So people are like, hey, ban the card, ban the card, ban the card, ban the card, ban the card. And uh, let's see, Chris Clay says, obviously actually banning a card is a much longer process with lots of steps along the way. Or you could just pull your head out of your ass and actually just do it because it's clear as day what you need to do. I mean, you don't need to have a whole damn meeting about it. I'm not all for making drastic decisions to the game that affect people financially and stuff without, you know, thinking it through. But, I mean, when was Nexus printed? We've had that many months to think it through. I, I think the, the determination has been made, Wizards. Oh, well, a two-hour long, highly publicized embarrassment about why Wizards won't remove this broken card from the game. But it's a long process with lots of steps. Well, then fix that process to speed it up. That's what's broken. This needs to be addressed immediately. So anyway, he goes on to say it's not card strength that would cause the ban. It's the anti-fun, anti-play nature of the card. Which, let me just remind everybody, is the exact opposite of what the Wizards of the Coast staff has ever said about any band in the last two years. They don't care about fun. They don't care about enjoyment. They care about one thing, the pro tours, the competitive play, competitive league, pro level. That is all they base it on. They don't consider anything else. They don't consider FNM attendance. They don't consider feedback from the community. All they consider is here's the win rate. Here's the numbers from MTGO, I guess, but mostly the big tournament events on there, and the Pro Tour. That is it. Oh, and Grand Prix. That's all they've ever shown on their articles. That's all the evidence they've ever stated. So Chris is 100% wrong when he says it's not card strength that would cause the ban. It's anti-fun, anti-play. Nope, it's card strength. What beats what? What ratio of, of win rate it has? That, that's all they've ever used as evidence. Ever. The last time they banned a card for just not being fun and being disruptive and annoying was the Eggs deck. And, I mean, how long ago was that? Before that, it was, what, Charizard and Goblin games were banned at some point for not being fun? And I can't actually think of any other examples. 
So sorry, Chris, but that's not at all how it works. That's just how we all wished it worked. So somebody asked if this guy got like a permanent ban or a one week ban. I would have permanently banned him. Um, Chris says, uh, short term, two hours to be clear. So he got banned for approximately the same amount of time that he wasted on Shahar's stream. I would have bare minimum given him a week ban, bare minimum. But you know what? Everybody knows the name Witch King now. I've said it a couple times and this video is going to get some views. I guarantee it. So I suspect that every single time somebody plays against Witch King, he's going to get timer trolled pretty damn hard. So his arena career is done. He might as well just delete his account right now. If you see this asshole in a game, just slow play him. Just slow play him every turn, every timer, every time. If Wizards is going to dance around the issue and give him a little two-hour slap on the wrist so he can go do something more productive, which honestly, he clearly conceded because he had to go somewhere or do something. So in all likelihood, he had nothing happen to him. Now, the next comments by Chris are very odd. Chris says, even if a card is banned, you can still always use it in direct challenge. Really? You can use that red life gain blocking Raptor in direct challenge? It's basically a free-for-all? I did not know that. That actually is kind of nice because, I mean, you don't have to play the person again and you're the one who arranged the, the game, so... Well, then we had some idiot reply to him talking completely out their ass saying, I don't see how this card properly functioning is comparable to other banned cards. And some people do like combos, but hate turn four aggro wins. Claiming not fun seems biased. Anything that doesn't let me play my deck, I hate it. Sincerely, every magic player ever. If you go first with a hyperspeed red rush deck and beat me on turn four, you can take your deck and shove it square up your ass. That was not even worth my time to shuffle my deck, sit down, and flip a coin to see who goes first to let me play two cards and then I lose. That's bullshit. Turn 30, where a grand total of zero of my permanents that aren't land stayed in play for more than one turn, same thing. Both of them are the same deck. Blue-white control draw out bullshit and red rush bullshit are the same deck. They don't let me play my deck that I spent time and money putting together. Hey, wait a minute. When they effectively ban decks in modern, why do they do it? Oh, that's right. Because they're too fast. They're sooner than turn four. That is their own words. They stated it. That is their policy. Decks cannot consistently win faster than turn four or they will ban them. Period. Or the deck is too powerful, too good, and too unbeatable. Well, that sounds awfully familiar, doesn't it? So get out the ban hammer, you morons. So then Chris agrees with him, which is why nothing ever gets done at Wizards of the Coast. He says, that's why it isn't something that happens quickly. We talk through all the cases. You're losing customers and 99% of the customer base wants this card gone. There, done, gavel, bang it, done. Case closed, ban the card. Then somebody says, can you make it easier to report people for constantly roping, as they call it, in Arena? It sucks having to leave the client for it. And Chris Clay just replies, I hear ya. Okay, two things I'd like to elaborate on with that. One, they ignore all player reports. As far as I know, and the rumor is, the only person who has ever been banned is Witch King. Nobody has ever been banned for doing anything in the history of Arena. That's the rumor. Speaking of rumors, there's a rumor that one of the customer support reps let uh, a little information leak out. They ignore reports for slow players who are purposely playing slow and, and you know, timering out and all that crap, time stalling in any form, and their company policy is to not ban anyone for doing it, even though it is the number one thing wrong with Arena is people slow playing on purpose. And the rumor is that that customer support rep got fired. Worth it. So they don't do anything with these reports. So not only do you have to go like what, send an email or something with like your game log. And it's like this whole big thing. Once they read it, they don't do anything about it. They need an in-game report system where if somebody gets like, you know, 10, 15, 20 reports. Then the system flags it for actual human review. And then they actually look at it. Yeah, that's kind of expensive, but you're also kind of making millions of dollars on arena. So, you know, spend a little bit of money on somebody, you know, pay them 12 bucks an hour to review this crap and you know, Arena would be playable because the toxic players would constantly get banned? Wouldn't that be a concept? It's the same as when Modern Warfare 3 started getting insane levels of hacking on the uh, PC where people were just flying around through the air with a Barrett sniper rifle shooting through, like, walls and crap, getting, you know, 150 kills. With the half a billion to one billion dollars that they made on that game, they couldn't have a room full of 50 people just jump into a game, oh look they're cheating, ban them, jump into the next game. There were probably no more than one to 10,000 concurrent games at any given time. 
A room full of 50 people could have gotten rid of every cheater in the game in one day. Uh, the total setup, labor cost, technology, all that, it cost about 20 grand. That's it. But nope, they just, game wasn't designed to do that. No spectator mode, no quick admin mode. They just never designed it because they, I guess, didn't know people would cheat at an FPS game that's popular. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess Arena didn't see this coming either. They were just like, yeah, there's going to be bad players, but what's the worst they could do? Oh, crap. So Witch King, whoever you are, I hope you get hit by a bus. And Shahar, you are a freaking legend for putting up with that crap. He got a ton of subs and a even more respect from the community for just not conceding to that bad behavior. I hope Witch King was late to work and got fired from his job. And hopefully on the way out of work, he got struck by lightning. You pull that crap against me, we're going to pull out Wireshark and see if the dedicated servers are as dedicated as we think they are. It'd be a real shame if they accidentally send some data peer to peer and I get your IP address. So anyway, Arena is still an unplayable shit show with this deck and Red Rush. Uh, it's pretty much 75% of the meta in the Gold, Platinum, and Diamond League. Oh wait, people are playing that five gate garbage too. Yeah, the funny thing is I don't consider that a huge threat because like three of my top decks all beat it. But it is horribly degenerate. Hey, I remember saying something about that during... Well, the Guilds of Ravnica and the Ravnica Legion spoilers. It's almost like I know better than Wizards does. Imagine that. So anyway, what do you think of this absolute PR shitstorm? Uh, have you given up on Arena yet? Let me know down in the comment section. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next video.